everyone, you got to listen because it's going to show you how amazing Jesus is. But he answered and said, it is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Okay, why in the world did Jesus call this Gentile woman, a Syrophoenician woman, a dog? Well, let's explore. Pay attention. Some of you know this already, but it's good to hear it again because it will still refresh our hearts and see how beautiful Jesus is. Number one, there are two specific words that Matthew uses for dog. Here is the Greek interlinear. Follow me, and we'll end it with this. Okay, go there. Matthew 15, 26, what is the word for dogs? All right, you'll see it's kunarios, 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 man, the Greek, okay? And it comes from kunarion, 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 right? Here it goes. It comes from that, okay? Now let's go to the Blue Letter Bible. Kunarion. Remember this word for dog. If you look at the lexicon, do you see it says a little dog, a house dog? Did you click on that link? Do you see Strong's Concordance, a little dog, a house dog? And then it helps word studies. It says properly puppy. Puppy, a diminutive of 2965 kuon. Now let's see how it's pronounced. Watch here. Bear with me because you're going to love this. You're going to see how beautiful Jesus is. So what was... Intended to criticize our Lord, backfires and shows his beauty and majesty. Okay, now watch here. How do you pronounce this word? Kunarion. Kunarion. Strong's G, 2952. Kunarion. Kunarion. You catch it? Rasmian way. One more time. Strong's G, 2952. Kunarion. Kunarion. You got it? Okay, that's the word he uses. Remember what the lexical sources stated regarding this word. It means a little dog, a house dog, a puppy, right? There is another word, word that our Lord uses that he did not use here. Go to Matthew 7, 6. Matthew 7, 6. See the other word that our Lord uses, which is always negative and is used for an unregen unregenerate, reprobate sinner who refuses to repent who refuses to turn to God, but continues in his filth and rebellion and ends up being destroyed in the lake of fire. That's not the word that Jesus uses. Okay? Matthew 7, 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Okay, did you see that word dogs? It's kuon. Kuon. Kusin, I'm sorry, Kusin, but where does Kusin come from? Kuon, my, my apologies. It's the word Kusin, but it does come from Kuon, okay? Kusin come from Kuon. This word, dog, whenever it's used in the New Testament, refers to an unregenerate, rebellious, stiff-necked sinner who opposes God, defies God, willfully indulges in a sin and rebellion to the point that God ends up destroying him or her. This is the word kusin kuon. That's not the word that Jesus used. Let me show you how this word kuon in Matthew 7, 6 is used elsewhere. Revelation 22, 15. It refers to a filthy, unregenerate dog, a human being who defies God, rebels against God, indulges in, in, in a sin or her sin and never turns to God and God ends up destroying them righteously so here it is revelation 22 15 for without outside the kingdom are dogs that's the word of Matthew 7 6 not the word that you Jesus used for the woman are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie Here's that word dog used in Matthew 7, 6, but not used for the Syrophoenician, the Gentile woman. Are you understanding my point? The two words that Matthew uses in Matthew. This word in Revelation 22, 15 refers to those who end up in hell because they're wicked, they're evil, they refuse to fear God and turn to Christ. 
That's the word used in Matthew 7, 6, but it's not used in Matthew 15. That's not the word that our Lord uses for the woman. Everyone with me, right, so far? Let's go to 2 Peter 2, uh, 22. That's exactly, Rosina Blanchard. Until they repent, that's what they are. 2 Peter 2, 22. But it has happened unto them. He, now, Peter's talking about false Christians, heretical Christians, who pervert the gospel of Christ, teach damnable heresies to destroy people. He talks about them, these wicked, false Christians. What are they? But it has happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned into his own vomit again, and the sow, the swine, the pig, that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. So notice Peter uses this term dog for wicked, rebellious, heretical, false Christians who've turned away from the truth, who perverted the gospel, are teaching damnable, destructive heresies, and giving people license to indulge in their sinful, sensual desires, and God is going to destroy them as dogs. That's not the word Jesus uses in Matthew 15, 26, right? That's not the word that Jesus uses in Matthew 17, 26. How's that word used? This word, uh, how's that word pronounced? This word that Jesus used in Matthew 7, 6, which Peter uses and John uses, Kuon, let's see how it's pronounced. Strong's G, 2965, Kuon. This is also used by Paul to refer to false Jewish believers, Judaizers who are preaching a false gospel and who would be condemned to hell because of it. What does he say about them? Philippians 3, verse 2. Not only Paul, Peter, and John. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. He's talking about these false Jewish Christians preaching a false gospel. He says they're dogs, evil workers, <clears throat> physical Jews. Now, side note, if anyone tells you it's not biblical to call perverts of the word, blasphemers of the word, willful, rebellious sinners, dogs, they don't know what they're talking about. Jesus. Paul, Peter, and John did not hesitate to call stiff-necked, wicked, unrepented sinners and perverters of the words dogs. So why do you get upset at me when I call such people dogs? You with me there? Now, what is the word that our Lord used for the Syrophoenician woman, for the Gentile? Let me again, so you see with your own eyes, so you don't think I'm making it up. Kunarion. What does it mean? It means a little dog, a house dog, a puppy, a little dog, a house dog, a puppy. Okay, so number one, Jesus did not use the other term for dog, a term that means someone who's wicked, rebellious, stiff-necked, unrepentant, who will be destroyed. Because of his or her sins. He did not call her that. What did he use? He used the term describing her as a puppy, a house dog, a dog who belongs to the master, who lives in the master's house and has a place and will be taken care of. Let's read Matthew 15, 26, 27 one more time. Let me show you how deep the word is. Stand amazed at how beautiful and magnificent Jesus is, Chaldean Assyrian. Matthew 15, 26 to 27. Be amazed at Jesus' love and compassion if you understand his words. Matthew 15, 26, 27. Notice what he says. But he answered and said, it's not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Now notice what she said. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Wow. Notice the exchange. She understood that Jesus just said she's a puppy in the house. She's right there with the children by the table and belongs to the master. So she's in the house and has a place in the house and is loved by the master and he will feed her. You see how deep the, what Jesus' words are? So she saw Jesus wasn't condemning her. He's saying, you'll be fed. 
You're a puppy beloved to the master. You are a house puppy. You have a place in the house. But first, let me feed the children. Then you'll be fed. But she goes, okay. But in the meantime, even the puppies get a breadcrumb before feeding time. So give me a breadcrumb. Wow. <whistles> you got it? Did you guys get it there? You understand what he said? He was encouraging her, not attacking her. Yes, you are a beloved pet, a puppy. You have a place in the house, in the master's house. You're loved by the master, and you'll be taken care of. But then she said, okay, that's fair. But in the meantime, give me a breadcrumb because even puppies snatch a breadcrumb before feeding time. And he goes, okay, because of your faith, here's your breadcrumb. Your daughter is healed. Now, because Jesus is the perfect communicator, because Jesus is, has perfect wisdom, he knows what metaphor to use for what group. Notice he called a Gentile a puppy, which would not be insulting. But notice what he calls the Jews in Matthew 15, 24. Same chapter, Matthew 15, 24. Matthew 15, 24. Same chapter, Matthew 15, 24. But he answered and said, and he's talking to his Jewish disciples, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Notice the Israelites who are lost, he calls them sheep. But to the Gentiles, he calls them puppies because a puppy would be an apt metaphor for Gentiles, but not so apt for a Jew. Sheep would be more apt for a Jew. You see, he even knows what metaphors to use for which audience, right? But his statement that these Jews are lost sheep would be more insulting. Do you know why? Because they're not just sheep. They're sheep who have strayed. They're lost. So if anyone was being insulted, it was the Jews, not the Gentiles. Because he said to her, you're in the house, but they're lost, and I have to go find them. Wow. So who was being insulted? The Gentiles or the Jews? The Jews, because the sheep were not in the sheep pen. They strayed. I got to go find them. Whereas he says to her, you're a house pet, a house dog, a puppy. You're in the house and I'll feed you. Just wait. Because these children are giving me problems. Let me take care of them, and then I'll turn to you. Wow. So is this an insult, really? Or it shows you the depth of the beauty, the love, the compassion, the mercy of Jesus. Right? Now, let me end it with the icing on the cake. Let's go to Mark 7, 29 to 30. Well, let's read Mark 7, 27 to 30. Let's go to the parallel. Mark 7, 27 to 30. Attention 29. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it unto the dogs. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. Yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. So they're under the table. They're there, Lord. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil's gone out of thy daughter. Verse 30. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. Let's reread Mark 7, 29 again, because you guys didn't catch it. Mark 7, 29. And he said unto her, for this saying, go thy way, the devil's gone out of thy daughter. You guys don't understand how powerful this statement is. Jesus is not physically present where his daughter is, but from that great distance, he already commanded the demon to leave, and the demon left, and Jesus knew the demon left and told her, go, the demon is gone. This shows you that though physically Jesus is on in one location, as God, he's present everywhere, so physically standing in front of her, but as God, he's already told the demon over there, leave her, get out, get lost. 
Wow. So you see the God man working right there. You caught it? Go. The demon is gone. How do you know, Jesus? I know because I'm God. Though physically I'm here, as God, I oversee everything. So already I've commanded the demon, leave her. Get lost. And he left. She's okay. Go. What more proof? What more proof do you, do you need that this Bible is supernatural? It's mind-blowing. Blowing. It is amazing. And it is really the Word of God. And the God of the Bible really exists. He is alive. And he is the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. What looked like an insult from Jesus to the woman turned out to be one of the greatest proofs of his love, compassion, and mercy, and beauty.